Welcome to You Make the Difference. I'm Wanda Walker, and today I'm talking to Pastor Alex Montgomery. Pastor Alex pastors Grace Covenant Worship Center in Hogansville, Georgia. It's located behind the Love Station on Bass Cross Road, mm -hmm. and we'd love to have you come and join us. We're going to talk about the power of being thankful. Mm -hmm. Being thankful can just turn your life around, can it, Pastor Alex? It can, Wanda, and uh, when we say that, it sounds trite, like, oh, just be thankful or just be joyful. But actually, there is a depth and a truth to walking with a thankful heart that goes far beyond just a seasonal festive attitude. And I know it's Thanksgiving, Christmas right now, but I want to talk about how Thanksgiving changes the way you see things, the way you see God, the way you see yourself. The Apostle Paul said over in 1 Thessalonians, a very popular scripture, it said, In everything, everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. All the years I taught Bible college and taught Christian college, I had myriads of students who say, Pastor, how do I know the will of God? And I would always come back and say, Are you giving thanks? Because the first thing it says there, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you. And I know that sounds like you're blocking off your future and your destiny and your purpose. I don't mean that. I mean, if you come with a heavy heart thinking, I won't be happy until I get that ministry. I won't be happy until I get that job. I won't be happy until I get that husband, that wife. We're always relegating our happiness to something that is given to us or changed for us rather than saying, I already have a heart of joy. It's part of the fruit of the Spirit. And so my thankfulness, I believe, is living out of what's already on the inside of us rather than trying to say, I'm going to change something out there. Yes. <clears throat> and wonder when I begin to walk in a thankful spirit, to me it says, God, you're bigger than everything else I have. Every other problem, every other frustration, every other disappointment, every other heartache, you're bigger. I go back to Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles 20 when he was surrounded by Ammonites, Moabites, and Meunites, and they were going to take him out. It was a fearsome situation, and they just began to lay down before the Lord. And a prophet, Jehaziel, comes and says, you won't have to fight in this battle. Stand still and see the glory of the Lord. Well, their stand still was give him thanks and praise right in the middle of a warring scenario. Yes. And that place was, they had a song <clears throat> that they sang. Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. So he had them lift their hands in the face of the enemy and begin to give God praise. Now get this, Wanda. The answer had not come yet. They were praising him for the promise that was given. And as they began to praise the Lord for the promise without fear, without worry, without dread, without trepidation, then the enemy turns on itself and leaves all their spoils out in the field for them to take. Because in essence, what they were saying is, God, I thank you. I praise you. You're bigger than these tribes. Yeah. Am I scared? Yes. Am I worried? Yes. Like our country with terrorism right now. You know what? I'm going to give thanks and praise to God for his protectiveness, for his covering, for surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. I'm going to give thanks for that right now. And, and I know that he comes through on that. So it's saying, God, I'm committed to you. I'm surrendered to you. I know you're in control. Yes. And, and talking about uh, terrorism, uh, Johnny Enloe sent out a word this morning that I saw on Facebook and it said, the Lord in Psalms 2 says mm -hmm. that he sits on his throne and laughs at the enemy. Yes. And so, you <laughs> know, good. the Lord's not afraid. That's right. And the Lord sees the enemy as being puny. And he says, you know, we will look on him and say, you know, is this yeah. him that we were also scared of. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, you know, he was just encouraging us to laugh and yes. laugh with the Lord. Amen. And, you know, that takes away fear. And it he does. said, you know, even if you don't listen to the news, 
for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, just cut off the news and just begin to enjoy the season and laugh and be thankful. Yes. And, you know, thankfulness is so powerful. Oh, it is. I have seen it turn around depression. Yes. And, uh, you know, even in myself, I have seen that. Mm -hmm. And there was a time in my life that I, you know, without... I don't know, you may have preached a sermon and I may have heard it, I don't know. But I began to give thanks and it seemed like I could not stop giving thanks. Amen. I mean, it was almost like, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh -huh. I am Lord. I am so thankful for this, and I'm so thankful for that. You know, yes. and I, you know, I would catch myself, and it just seemed like, yeah, I am just <laughs> giving thanks yes. every time I turn around. But it did. It it strengthens you, mm -hmm. and you know, the joy of the Lord is your strength. It Absolutely. brings forth that joy it does. when you can realize the blessings that we already have and the mm -hmm. greatness of God. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, I want to see it to me, that place of just continuing in your thanksgiving is releasing your faith. There's a wonderful scripture over in Colossians, the second chapter. The, the uh, verse 6 of that chapter says, As you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and abounding in faith. It says really rooted and built up in your faith. Abounding therein, in your faith, with thanksgiving, uh, yes. as you've been taught, with thanksgiving. So if I'm going to abound in my faith, knowing that faith is a gift that's given to me, I don't have to work up faith. We've been given the measure of faith. Right. Have the faith of God, it says in Mark 11, 23. So when you were doing that, I believe that you're releasing your faith that as Jehoshaphat did, God is on my side, God's going to protect me, God's going to look after me, God is going to deliver me. So as I give God praise, what do I like to say this? It changes my seeing. Rather than just seeing the things that are in front of me as Jehoshaphat saw those armies uh, that looked very daunting, that looked very scary, that looked like they were going to be overwhelmed and overcome. Yes. But as they began to praise the Lord, they were looking at the unseen. And I think over in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, where it says, all things are for your sake, that the abundant grace that's going out to many will by the thanksgiving abound to the glory of God. And then he says, while we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are not seen, for the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. So thanksgiving gets me in the place of where I don't deny what's around me. I don't deny the problems. I don't deny the hurts. I don't deny the challenges. I tell people in counseling, don't deny, but have that but God. Yes. I'm going through a depressed place, but you are my strength. You are my shield. You are my buckler. You are my stability. And that it all depends on where you put the but in the middle. Yes. If I start on this side of saying, well, God, you're good, but... I'm going through so many difficult challenges and so many problems and nobody understands me and nobody loves me and nobody cares and I'm just in a place of feeling forsaken and rejected. That's the wrong way. And I'm not sure you're going to help me. That's right. And see, Thanksgiving, you're right, Wanda, puts the complete control on him. You know, <clears throat> we had talked in church to about Abraham Lincoln and uh, I grew up in the town where Abraham Lincoln was born up in Kentucky. And uh, then he moved to Springfield, Illinois, and Jill and I have gone up to that museum in Springfield a number of times. I love the history of Lincoln. One of the neatest things that happened to him is on the battlefield of Gettysburg in 1863, he had a real catharsis, a real kairos experience with the Lord in that bloody battlefield where he gave his most famous speech. He also went down on his knees and many felt like he really committed himself to the Lord. He'd been religious before. He'd read his Bible before. But as far as saying, my life is really yours, so many believe, historians believe, it was there at Gettysburg. Mm -hmm. That was the worst time of the Civil War. It was horrible. It was dark. Yes. He starts to get a vision about Thanksgiving. That had happened at uh, Gettysburg. There was July of that year. Just in a few months, he comes up with a Thanksgiving proclamation that was renewing what Washington had done in 1789 about the Thanksgiving that we now have. But Lincoln changed it to the last Thursday of the month of November. 
And he writes stuff on, I wish I'd brought it with me today, where he says stuff that almost sounds like the guy's out of his mind. We're having a fruitful year and wonderful skies, and God has honored us and blessed us and has caused us to abound as never before. And people are going, you must be out of your head. This yes. country's falling apart and is splitting at the seams. He got a picture. I believe by the Spirit, yes. after that prayer in the horrible place at Gettysburg, where he said, even though our country looks like it's coming to pieces, I'm going to start to praise the Lord. I'm going to do what Washington did after the Revolutionary War. And he invited our whole country, and he set up the stationary Thanksgiving Day to start to thank God. And I thought, wow. I wish our nation would do that now. Yes. Our nation is in a tough place, in a scary place, in a divided place, just as it was in 1863 and 1864. But he began to see a revelation. And here's what I think, Wanda. He started to see that Thanksgiving is a release of your faith. Praise as a release of your faith. It was true of Jehoshaphat. It was true of the Apostle Paul. When the Apostle Paul said, I've asked the Lord three times to take this thorn off of me. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the thorn was blindness. I don't think it was bowed over. I think it was that the Judaizers were always after him, as it says in 2 Corinthians 11, where he was beat almost 200 times. I can't imagine yes. that. Where he was left out in the water a day and a night. Where he was stoned. Where he was abandoned. All the horrible things that happened to Paul. And he says, eh, it's a light affliction. Yeah. It's just for a moment. Yeah. And here's his praise. It works a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Now that's 2 Corinthians 4. And then 2 Corinthians 12, he says, His grace is sufficient. When I'm weak, He's strong. And I'll glory or give thanks in my infirmities. That's what you did. Yes. That the power of Christ may rest upon me. Yes, and, and when we look at Paul's life and the things that he, goes, he went through, yeah. then we can look at our life and say, wow, if he can be thankful in those circumstances, yes. then yes. surely we can. And when you were talking about Abraham Lincoln, it, re it reminded me of something that I've heard recently about Joshua and Caleb and uh, how they were part of the spies that were sent into mm -hmm. the promised land to yes. scope it out and see, um, you know, if they should go in and take it, even though the Lord had said, go in and take it. Yeah. And um, the the 10 spies came back and it says they gave an evil report right. about the giants in the land. Yes. And, um, all, you know, we, we can't take the land because they're too big. Mm -hmm. And then Joshua and Caleb came back and they had seen the very same thing. All yes. the spies saw the very same thing. Right. But Joshua and Caleb said, you know, those giants will be bread for us. We can go in and yes, we can take amen. the land. So mm -hmm. lots of times in our own circumstances, mm -hmm. we have to have the eyes of Joshua and Caleb right. and see what God is doing in those circumstances or see our God right. and know that he is well able to deliver us and to bring us out of those circumstances. Absolutely, Wanda. You know, we have the authority in of ourselves to assign meaning to whatever situation we're in, whether it's hard, whether it's tough, whether it's terrorism, whether it's war, it doesn't make any difference. We have the ability to assign meaning. And uh, that situation in and of itself, uh, it might be going through a divorce, it might be going through a bankruptcy, it might be going problems with kids, whatever. And we don't minimize those problems. Right. Or we don't say they don't exist. But I can still assign the meaning that Joshua and Caleb did, that in the midst of that challenge, I can have a Romans 8, 28, that all things are going to work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. We're called as justified people. We're called as glorified people. We're called as righteous people. When I start to assign the meaning to my life of what He assigns to me, that's what jo uh, Joshua and Caleb did. Yes. That's what Jehoshaphat did. I believe that's what Lincoln did. I think that's what Paul did. Paul in a situation where he could not control it. Lincoln thought he could not control this war. Right. Jehoshaphat surely couldn't control the situation. So they began to give thanks and praise. And in the middle of it, they said, God, it's all you. You know what, Wanda? <clears throat> in a crazy kind of way, God is attracted to weakness. Mm -hmm. Not because he likes beating up on us. He doesn't do that to us. Mm 
But in our weakness, it lets him be glorified. It's kind of like law and grace. Law simply means I'll do it. I'll improve myself. I'll keep those rules. I'll be the one that'll make myself pleasing. No, we can't do anything to make ourselves pleasing. We're pleasing because we are justified by him and made righteous by him. We say it's all you. Grace is not an excuse for sin. Grace puts all the focus on what he did and what he has given to me and thanks Thanksgiving says, thank you. Kind of like Gomer Powell, thank you. Thank you. I just say praise God because you have done it all. He's given us all things that pertains to life and godliness, like Jonah down in the whale. Jonah was in a situation where he says, I don't want to go and preach to those Ninevites. They're nasty Gentiles. They won't hear God. And you're asking me to go to a people that are just absolutely abhorrent to me. I don't want to go to them. And God says, you're going. So finally in that whale, what was the breakthrough? He started to give thanks for it. Okay, I give up, I surrender. Yes. I surrender my right to try to fix it by my little temper tantrum, by my little fit. How many people think they'll try to change their husband, change their wife, change their situation if I can just use anger as control? Or how about this, I'll just ignore you. Or I'll talk to somebody else, or I'll isolate myself. All places, instead of thanksgiving, that we're gonna use an attitude to try to fix it, rather than just saying, I give praise. Uh, Wanda, when we give praise and thanksgiving, we let go of our expectations. When I start giving thanks for a spouse, when I start giving thanks for an employer, when I start giving thanks for a board member, when I start giving <laughs> thanks, I'm saying, you know what, it doesn't mean that I can't speak the truth in love. But rather than trying to control it by my attitude, by my anger, by my bitterness, by my disappointment, by my rejection, you name it, I'm going to start to give up the right to fix them because then I take the law and the demand off of them. When I don't have an expectation anymore, then I'm free from that situation pulling me down or getting me frustrated or me judging that other person saying, well, if it wasn't for you, I'd really be happy. Well, if you'd change that about you, I'd be okay. No, that's not it. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. And, and it really frees that other person because they're not dealing with your anger and your bitterness. That's right. And so, you know, I think sometimes we lock people into a place when we don't forgive them or we hold yes. anger and bitterness yes. against them. That's right. But when we release it, God works. And I believe it works on their heart. And, you know, maybe they know that they've done something to you that was wrong. That's right. But when you keep coming to them in love, yeah. I mean, that's probably something different than they've experienced in their life before. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because uh, when we do something that hurts somebody, a lot of times that person is anger, angry with us. And you can tell. Uh, there, when you see them, you can you can tell that there's something between the two of you. Yeah. But when you release that, mm -hmm. then you're both free. That's right. And and you know, when the other person is ready to come back in that relationship, there's not a bunch of jump between mm -hmm. the two of you. That's right. You can just enter back into the relationship that you had before. Isn't that great? Yes. We feel like if we take the demand or the expectation off, that they'll never change. So we feel out of control. We feel as though the circumstance is intractable. It can never be altered, and it's just the opposite. Because when I die to try to changing that situation, I actually plant a seed where the Lord, like Jehoshaphat, like Lincoln, like the Apostle Paul, yes. can take over the situation. Because when I'm weak, then I'm strong. And that's where Paul said in Philippians 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And the implication right before that in the first part of uh, Philippians 4 was that you had two ladies in that church that were kind of battling e with each other. And so rather than Paul sitting down having a big confrontation and you need to fix this and you need to change that, which is okay. He had some of that in 1 Corinthians. He was confronting some things. But there he said, hey, ladies, rejoice in your differences. Rejoice in the fact that you don't see eye to eye. Drop your expectation. Because really when you take that expectation off, you're more likely to get the answer to the problem that you want. When you're saying, well, if my husband doesn't love me in this certain way, my wife doesn't talk to me in a certain way, pfft, I'm not going to talk back to them. Well, they're mean to me. Well, they don't care about me. They don't love me. 
So until I see a change in them, then I'm not going to be happy. That means that I'm living my whole life from the outside in rather than, as the song says, living from the inside out. Yes. And over in 2 Corinthians um, 5, 16, Wanda, it says a neat little scripture. Right before our famous scripture about the new creation, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, old things have passed away. Right before that, it says, henceforth, know we no man by the flesh, by their history, by how they've performed. I don't know you by how you acted 10 minutes ago, 10 years ago, or 50 years ago. I don't treat you with any history because I take the demand and expectation off. So now I can praise God for you. Yes. And we don't have to agree. It's okay. If you hurt me, I'll tell you, yeah, that hurt. But I'm not going to use a you statement. You made me so angry. You made me so upset. You dis. No. I take responsibility. Remember what we said? We can add meaning to whatever we choose to. Yes. If I want to add joy and thanksgiving to it, I can. If I want to add misery and sadness and depression, I can. So what I can say in that moment is I rejoice. And then Paul's great words, be anxious for nothing. Yes. See, and all we're saying here today, Wanda, thanksgiving also changes my feelings, just like you said before. Yes. And it says be anxious for nothing, but in everything, everything, by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep or guard your mind and your heart. Isn't that a great promise? Yes, it is. And you know, as you were talking about that, it reminded me of how God sees us, too. Yes. With, with no bad history. And, Amen. you know, His mercies are new every morning. And, it, and That's he, right. He chooses to treat us that way. That's and, right. And when we actually realize that and come to that understanding and that He's treating other people that way yes. also, yes, amen. then it allows us to begin to look at each other differently and treat each other differently. Oh, absolutely, Wanda. Uh, and that, there's another thing. It changes the way I see people. You know, one of the greatest things, and you do this all the time, and that is thanksgiving. When I'm really thankful for somebody, I begin to add value to their life. Rather than saying, now, how are you going to add value to my life? You're going to love me. You're going to treat me right. You're going to accept me. You're going to do this, 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 and that. No. I want to add value to your life. And I want to ask the Holy Spirit, what things can I do to add value to their life? And even further, Lord, what can I do? Holy Spirit, what can I do on a daily basis to add value? I had one of my uh, church people had come to me and said, uh, I want to pick up on that pastor. And so we sat down and started praying. And they just had a simple thing of going to, this was a kid in school, going to another kid in school and just sitting with them at lunch and saying something on the one day of the week that they would be at the same lunch hours as this other kid, uh -huh. saying something to them that would encourage them. We went even as far as saying, let's talk about what you'd say. So we prayed for a minute, and she said, I know what I'm going to say. And so she had some neat little things to say. She said, I want to add value to their mm -hmm. life. That's a thankful heart. Well, she did that, and the other kid that received it began to cry because it was a kid who'd kind of been rejected, uh -huh. a little bit scorned by some of the other students. And so she said, rather than thinking, are they going to receive me? Are they going to bless me? Are they going to love me? I'm going <clears> to <throat> start to add value to people's lives by going to them with, uh, here we go, I choose to add meaning not only to my life, but to their life as a choice. Right. And they went to that person, and it changed the whole scenario from sad, lonely, depressed, and rejected to happy, to thankful, to joyful, because they chose to take somebody that didn't deserve it, that didn't and earn it that nobody else liked and said, you know what, I'm going to give thanks for you. I'm going to add value to you. I'm going to hear the Holy Spirit about how he wants me to, to talk to you and treat you. See, that's where Thanksgiving gets us out of ourselves yes. and gets us engaged to bless other people. We have a very selfish society, a very self-centered society. We're all about selfie. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I always want to see how I look. How about with a thankful heart? We begin to ask the Holy Spirit, how do you want me to impart your life to them? Let my day be etched out by how I bring value to other people. 
Yeah. That changes us, Wanda, as well as changing the situation. Yeah, so we could take pictures of other people and place ah, them on Facebook, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, during this season where it's Christmas time, and, yes. and some people may feel like they don't have enough money to give gifts, yeah. right. um, giving the gift of encouragement is, is one of the most powerful oh. gifts. Yes, it is. And so, you know, if we could write somebody and tell them, yeah. Uh, how we value them and how we see them um, in our lives. I mean, that would be awesome for people That's to receive right. those notes. And, you know, uh, lots of times, even though we are showing people love and we are uh, being friendly to people, when you express the value that they have for you, I mean, I don't think they had any idea. Mm -hmm. And And it really enriches your relationship yes it does and also builds them up and so oh um, absolutely yeah we just like to encourage everybody to remember mm -hmm. to express your appreciation for other people during this season absolutely and you know what when we do that wanda i think it just scares the you know what out of the devil yes because one of the things about thanksgiving and praise is it is a powerful weapon against darkness they hate it Yes. In the end times, which I believe we're in today, it says that there is going to be a heavy, depressed, rejected, harsh, bitter, selfish attitude. Thanksgiving and praise, like Jehoshaphat, like Lincoln, like Paul, stands against the work of the enemy. And I think of Psalms 149, the high praises of God and a two-edged sword in your mouth. Everything we're talking about today, blessing others, helping others, praising God, giving thanks, changing the way we see, releasing our faith, seeing God is bigger, it sets the enemy away and opens the door for light and liberty and power and miracles to begin to happen. And love to flow. Absolutely. Yes. And yes. You, know, you know, love is our most powerful weapon. Yes, it is. Because God <laughs> is love. That's right. And so when we release that, into the atmosphere. It is hmm. so powerful. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, we were talking on Sunday about the three wise men yeah. and how they came and they brought gifts. They did. And they were very thankful. Yes, they were. That the king had been born. And you um, you took that back to even Daniel's time. They were taught by Daniel, not of course them, that was 500 years earlier. Daniel was in the uh, 600s of the BC. Yes. But yeah, he had taught the Magi. The Magi had been released from being killed by Nebuchadnezzar and they always remembered that and they learned about the Messiah and so then the Magi, they weren't just three, there were three gifts, but yes. there were probably 300 of them, the yes. king makers. And they came back with praise and worship before the Lord, you know why? Because Daniel had honored them 500 years ago. He said yes. it'd be 490 years. And his honor and his thanksgiving and him keeping them from dying opened them to start to see about the star and to come down to those years of Daniel 9 when he'd be born. That's a thankful heart. Yes. And just like Daniel <laughs> is thankful and he made an impact on generations to come, Yes. you are very important too. Thank you for watching. You make the difference. And remember, you truly do.